so I I joined the gym for the first first time when I was 16. It took me a while to get into it, to be honest, because I, I mean, anyone, I mean, you guys, right, you lift. Um, when you first go to the gym, you've got no clue what you're doing. So I, I went to the local gym, got into weightlifting, didn't really do free weights because the free weights was full, full of, I guess, huge blokes. And I just didn't feel like I fit in there because as a kid, I was very skinny. And the reason that I joined the gym was to build muscle uh, and get a bit bigger and eventually build confidence. Um, so yeah, got into the gym at 16 and started lifting weights there. I had no idea what I was doing and it wasn't until a few years later that I actually realised that, you know, everyone else had their own sort of insecurities individually as well. So whereas I was going into the gym thinking, oh God, everyone's looking at me, I don't know what I'm doing. Funnily enough, the other sort of lads at the same age that had joined the gym, none of which uh, were speaking to, other, to each other, I, I wasn't speaking to them, were all having the same sort of insecurities. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I joined the gym at 16 and since then I've never looked back. Did it develop some sort of discipline going to the gym and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, so at that time I was not very good at school. So not as in misbehaved, I, was, I, I think I was quite well behaved, but I just, it just didn't resonate with me. I didn't enjoy it and I basically wasn't get, getting the grades that I should have got. And then when I went to the gym and I realised that if I turn up five days a week and I do the routine that I downloaded from you know, online, then within a year I would be in a better position than when I left off and that was the first real structure that I'd sort of self-imposed on myself and then all of a sudden about six twelve months later once I truly understood the gym and loved the gym I then applied that to my school life and you know my academic life and and to learning and all of a sudden after applying that to the, the other side of my life all of a sudden my grades just started to rise rapidly and it yeah the gym completely changed my life. So, correct me if I'm wrong with the timings, but then you go to uni, and mm -hmm. you, whilst you're at uni, you start developing apps, websites, and is that the right timings at yes. all? Yes, yeah, so I went to uni, is it 17, 18? Um, went to uni at Aston in Birmingham, um, which was great for me, because it wasn't far from home. Um, and it's a very entrepreneurial uni. But um, yeah, at that point, so going back to when I was at school, during my GCSE, so up to the age of 16, wasn't very good at school. I was really, really fortunate where, despite not getting brilliant grades, the school allowed me to stay on uh, through sick form, which is uh, from 17 to, eight, uh, 17 to 18, I think. Um, and then during sick form, I picked up an IT class, and that was the class that changed my life because all of a sudden, I learned how to use Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, build websites, and that's where I really got the bug for IT and tech. It was then after that when I joined university, I wanted to essentially de develop iPhone apps just because I was fascinated by them. I thought they were cool, and to be honest, there was no one else that was doing it in, in, that, in my area at the time. So yeah, taught myself how to develop apps from books and YouTube videos and whatnot and developed four iPhone apps, um, two of which got into the top charts in the UK. They were both uh, fitness apps. Probably weren't in the charts because they were good, but probably more in the charts because no one else was do really doing them. Um, but yeah, for me, that was again an amazing learning curve. And I think some people think that you just you stumbled across Gymshop, but you was having a go at, out, like, at other businesses mm. as well. So, yeah, I developed four iPhone apps, and then I think it was six or seven websites prior to Gymshark. So, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I think inherently I'm quite a creative person. Like, even now, outside of work, I love just messing around with, you know, with different things. Um, and at the time, it was just a case of, I'm going to make this happen, then this happen, then this happen, then this website. And I just really enjoyed making them. And because I was so into the gym, my, I guess I just wanted to be involved in the fitness industry, however, however that made sense. So when I was making apps, rather than just making any old app, I'd combine that with my passion for fitness and make fitness apps and then try and make fitness websites. And I was messing around trying to make like a fitness social media platform, a fitness sort of forum similar to like bodybuilding.com at the time, uh, like a fitness article page and a blog. It was just a combination of me creating using the new, uh, I guess, tools that I had, uh, web development and app development, um, creating for my passion that was fitness. So then talk us through start of Gymshark. Um, so I wish I could say that I had this incredible strategic plan as to how it was all going to build out, but it was nothing like that. Um, the reason that I actually made the Gymshark website was because I'd sort of done everything else, not, not that I'd actually succeeded in it, because to be honest, I think everything else failed. I, I just wanted to make a fitness website that would transact. 
So it was a case of I wanted to sell something. So everything I'd mentioned before was either an app or a blog or a forum or a social network or whatever it was. None of those would transact. So I thought, how cool would it be to have a fitness website that would sell things? Um, the only problem was I couldn't afford any stock to sell. Um, I went to actually one of my friends that lived locally at the time. He worked for a company called USN, so a big South African supplement brand. And I said to him, like, right, what's the cheapest supplements I can buy off you so that I can sell them online trying to buy stock for the website? And he said it was £8,000 a month minimum order. And like, I mean, I'd never seen £8,000 in my life, let alone £8,000 a month. So that was just a complete no-go. So I sort of hit this brick wall. And then I thought, well, I could drop ship, and drop shipping was brilliant for me because it meant I could load up the website with thousands and thousands of different supplements. So the website was massive and it looked really professional and brilliant, um, but I didn't have to buy any of the stock. So yes, I got to transact, which was brilliant, but it wasn't in the way that I wanted to. I wasn't holding stock at the time, but it was still an amazing experience and built the website um, using Shopify at the time, which again was brilliant for me because it didn't it meant that it was actually quite easy to build the website. Um, and yeah, it took a few months, it took quite, quite a while, um, launched the website and absolutely nothing happened. Then a few months later we had our first sale and it was just absolutely incredible. It was, it was 52 pounds of which about two pounds of that was profit um, by the time we'd shipped the supplement and everything. But it was the best two pounds I'd ever made in my life. And it was just so fucking cool. Like it was just the most amazing feeling ever. And I was literally like running around my bedroom, just buzzing and um, yeah, then went on to the, obviously, the website and shipped out the product. It, went, it all went great. Um, and that was that. And to be honest, that, that did okay. I, you, it was never going to do particularly brilliantly from a commercial perspective because the margins were so, so small. But for me, it was more of a, like an academic test that it could be done. Um, Gymshark really didn't do a lot for the next few months. And then I remember being at the gym and just thinking like no one makes the clothes that we want to wear at the time there was other brands sort of american brands that would make big sort of baggy clothes um there wasn't any of the european brands really doing what we want no one was speaking to the lifters that we were um so i just thought why don't we similar to websites and apps why don't we just make them so I bought a screen printer and a sewing machine and started to hand make the clothes that we wanted to wear to the gym and even that even in that moment it wasn't a case of let's make it to sell it it just came from a place from no one's making it, so let's just make it for ourselves. And there was, at the time, a group of, there must have been at least 10 of us that would all go to the gym together, and we just started wearing it. Um, after a while, decided to put things onto the website, and, you know, the margins were much better on clothes, and it just seemed to pick up traction so much more quickly than the supplements, and people just started to fall in love with the product. Um, I'll never forget, actually, at that point, we were making our own clothes, and... It, there wasn't this period of own clothes and then produced elsewhere, but there was a pair of shorts that I really wanted to produce. Um, and I was messaging a guy and chatting to a guy quite, quite regularly, actually, a guy in Pakistan called Tanvir. And we were just chatting away and we were sort of sampling these shorts. And we, we basically completed this short. We had a finished product that I absolutely loved. And he'd done all the sampling for free just as a favour. And we finished it. And I said to him, this is absolutely brilliant, but the only problem is I can't afford to buy any of them. So can you do me a massive favour and produce, I think it was 250 pairs of these shorts and send them over to me in the UK and I promise you, Tanvir, I will pay you the money. And I thought there's no chance he's going to say yes to this. There is not a chance in hell. Um, but he was like, yeah, cool, let's do it. And he sent, sent me the, the product. Uh, we put it on the website and it, again, it just flew out. Um, within, I think, 48 hours, I sent him the money for the full order. Um, and then we just, that was when we'd sort of both started producing clothes externally with manufacturers, but also internally as well with the sewing machine and the screen printer. So yeah, at the start, I think it took, there was about two years of handmaking product from my nan taught me to sew, my mom taught me to sew. I'd never forget actually, there was a particular product that I was really struggling on with the sewing machine. Um, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't solve this problem. I just couldn't do it. Um, and I had my, my shift at pizza would always be from five o'clock to 10, 10 o'clock uh, at night. And it was coming up to, I don't know, it must have been like half four or whatever, and I just couldn't do this thing. So I said to my mom, I was like, can you please do me a massive favor and just try and like solve this for me and video sort of an instruction for me so that when I come back from work, because she'd have been, been in bed, I can then just go and do it. So there was this video that she recorded of basically how to sort the sewing machine out and how to do what I wanted to do. Um, and then I could come home and I guess carry on sewing through the night and. Yeah, it was, um, it was an amazing time, 
Although I, um, it's an amazing time looking back now, but obviously at the time I had no idea that this would be anything for me. That was just a bit of fun of an evening. So yeah, it's quite weird to look back now. What was a typical day like right at the start? Like what was um, that like? So the t typical day actually, it's quite, quite easy to explain. So I'd wake up in the morning, I'd go to university in the day. So get on the train, get into Aston, do the, do the, um, do the day. Normally finish uni, I don't know, say four, go into Pizza Hut and do my working day, five till 10. And then 10 p.m. onwards, I would essentially be working on Gymshark. Um, after about a year, I was still working at Pizza Hut at the time. Um, the job as a delivery driver at Pizza was quite useful because in between deliveries, I could jump on my phone and um, do sort of customer service responses. So it was great because I was obviously being paid to work there. I'd get a free pizza at the end of every shift and I could also work on, on Gymshark. So it was like the perfect job in many respects for me. Um, and growing up, being a very, very introverted person, it was, it was very useful for me to be in front of people and having that sort of customer service-like response. So I learned a lot doing the job as well.